We have a lot of immigrants coming over the border, a lot of really desperate people who are in dire situations of need, and then also a lot of really bad people who are coming in and committing crimes, increasing the drug cartel, human trafficking, pushing fentanyl to our children, lacing everything with just horrible substances. What's your take on the immigration crisis affecting the U.S.? Well, I think it is the number one issue going on uh, currently in this in this in this country. I mean, the, the, the stat I couldn't wrap my head around was, yeah, there's seven point three million uh, migrants that have crossed the border since white uh, Biden uh, was sworn in. That's more than the population of 36 states. I, I had to check that out. I couldn't believe that more than the population of 38, 36 states just since he took office. Um, we're not vetting these people. Uh, we're and we're taking care of them. I mean, we're taking care of all these people, and the cost is, is just extraordinary, from housing to education to um, incarceration. When they do get, inc- I mean, everything is is it's just a major cost that our great grandkids are going to be paying for forever. We have to turn it around. That is number one na- nationally. We don't see it as bad in Alaska. Maybe maybe you do in Anchorage, but we don't see it as bad. But it's coming. And it's coming fast and we have to stop this. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate that you've also taken a crack at handling this topic with humor. And so (laughs) you you made an immigration related ad for compost that kind of compares and contrasts legal U.S. citizens with those who've entered the U.S. illegally. So we want to share that ad with our audience right now. Let's roll that ad. Hey, it's Craig from Compost. If you've been listening to the news lately, the border, the drug problem, it's pretty scary. But we're celebrating here by having a huge Can-Am sale on all our ATVs and side-by-sides. We're doubling the savings. So if the rebates are a thousand, you save two grand. If it's three grand, you save six. But there's a catch. This sale is only good for hardworking, tax-paying, law-abiding citizens in this country. If that's you, we've got your back. If not, sorry, you're paying full price. Compos doing business in Fairbanks since Harry Truman was president. All right. That's such a creative way of taking on this pressing issue of immigration and something that's on everybody's mind and then using it to promote your sale at Compos. Is this sale still happening or is this kind of a dated ad, Craig? Uh, We've we've just introduced a new ad that's coming out. So this one just ran its course through the end of the outdoor show last week. Um, But, but the whole idea is, you know, we are, we are, we are giving a benefit to hardworking, tax-paying, legal residents of this country. If you're not in that category, you're paying full boat. Now, granted, I'm not going to. We don't sell to illegal immigrants as a rule anyway, so I'm not losing any sales. But it makes people feel better about you know what? I do pay my taxes, and I don't get a free hotel room. I do. I do bust my butt all year, and and I don't get a handout. So, so I'm, I'm rewarding those people that are doing it right. And it's that simple and never had one negative comment on that ad in 30 days. Every, I've run into people at Fred Myers at Safeway and they go, I love that ad law abiding citizen ad. Yeah. So, so it's kind of got its own legs now up here. It's, it's pretty cool. That's and I fascinating. thought about it when I went, when I first thought about it, I thought I heard, hadn't heard anybody use that theme anywhere nationally or anything. I said, yeah, we're going to, we're going to do it here. <laughs> yeah, I love that. And it's probably one that you'll be able to run again and get just as much positive oh, yeah. response. Yeah. You've even gotten positive response nationally. I mean, saw the interview that you did with Neil Cavuto on Fox. And this yeah, one, yeah. yeah, this one's classic and timeless. So for those who aren't aware of Mr. Craig Campo's national profile, you had commissioned an ice sculpture of Al Gore. But I'll, I'll kind of think of it like the presidential busts that you see in a museum and he they they did it out of ice but it had al gore's mouth opened very wide and then you ran a was it the gas muffler the the truck 460 ford three-quarter ton with a hose coming out we drill a hole in the back of his neck and he's so as he's as we're playing his copenhagen speech under green lights he's he's belching out exhaust yeah. And so it was, it was, Cavuto, it became the number two story on Drudge. It was on Fox News. Uh, I got interviewed by Cavuto, but it was also on Hannity. It was on uh, Ingram. It was all over the place. It went viral. I mean, such a profound way to, to show demonstrably 
Al Gore is blowing smoke about the climate change crisis, and you live it daily in Fairbanks, Alaska. So tell us that story. Well, yeah, and and so it, it was. We're not seeing all the all the you know the oceans coming up uh, crazy and all this all this uh, propaganda that Gore had, and and so you know we we had invited him up to debate. Literally got a hold of his office in Tennessee, and they had said that uh, you know there was a conflict on the Times and went back to my email we had never we had never offered a time we said we can work around your schedule so it was a typical response he didn't want to debate the issue and i had um bjorn lomborg um uh, sarah palin actually i think was governor at the time and she i talked to her because we used to support her husband in a snow machine racing and she was willing to debate him one-on-one -on, -one on the global warming issue up here um and uh and uh, we had uh, professor akasofu from the university who also was engaged so we were trying to really use a little humor and bring this to the forefront for some real conversation. You know, that was an extremely cold winter. We had 87 days where it didn't get above 20. We had 61 below, you know, so uh, it was great. And it was fun to interview with um, Neil Cavuto. We got so we got some good uh, airtime and it was uh, we got a me or we got our message out. That's what we we're trying to do. Yeah, I think that's really good. You also have tackled the issue of international foreign policy with the Chinese spy balloon. For those who don't remember, <laughs> <laughs> last year yeah. we had a spy balloon from China travel all the way across the United States. And just for the longest time, our national intelligence community just could not figure out what this unidentified flying object was. And it was over Alaska airspace as it entered the United States. And so you created a video about that. And we want to show everybody that video. Let's roll that video real quick. So my name is Craig Campo, lifelong resident up here in Northern Alaska. Probably heard about the item that was shot out of the sky, whatever it was. So we heard a bunch of fighter jets last night and out in the backyard where there's some debris that fell down. I've called the authorities, but uh, nobody showed up yet. We're gonna go check it out. Oh my gosh. It was from China. I'll be down. Okay. That is a phenomenal video, Mr. Craig. Yeah. What, <laughs> what inspired you to make this video about the spy balloons? It was a Saturday at work and it was kind of slow that day. And uh, I, I walked by my, you know, this was all over the news and I, I walked by my secretary's desk and I saw her laptop sitting there and I went, I said, this will be fun. I just made a Hunter Biden sticker for the laptop. And then I thought, oh yeah, yeah, it could have fallen out of the sky, you know? <laughs> so I just randomly did it in about 15 minutes right in front of our shop and just um, sent it to my guy that puts stuff on Facebook and it went viral. I mean, it, it got a lot of hits and, and I didn't even expect that. I was just burning time on a Saturday, but <laughs> it wasn't so much uh, promoting our business. It was just having a little fun with politics, which again, people need to laugh more. That's what's wrong with this country. We're not laughing enough. We gotta, you know, it is so contentious, these issues. And I don't care if you're a, a Republican, a Democrat, independent, we all need to laugh more. And so that's, I put that stuff out there on our website. We've got it on our uh, Facebook page. And we just, uh, about half of everything we put out there is intended to make somebody laugh a little bit yeah just bringing some humor to truthful situations which is a really great way to to take a stand and change culture and change minds i want to pivot a little bit and just get a little bit more serious get some wisdom from you as a leader in our fairbanks community and as a successful businessman i would just like to hear a story from you about a time that you've had to take a stand and how it impacted you or changed you or prepared you as a leader and as a person no, I probably started, uh, well, uh, federal overreach has always been, you know, I'm part of the Laundry House Gang, a group of about 30 up here that meet, have met 42 years in a row every Wednesday. And our big mission is to try and push back on overreach uh, and keep Alaska Alaskan. And so uh, when Jim Wilde had that case on the Yukon River where the Park Service tasered him and, and you know, the guy was just trying to go put meat in the freezer and they thought he was trying to escape to Canada and it was just... And we got behind that guy in court. We helped him out financially. This was this was the uh, predecessing case to the Sturgeon case. Um, 
and and so that kind of overreach where I said that could have been me. I, I could have been me going out hunting That's with right. my family, and all of a sudden you're being face down in the mud, handcuffed, tasered. What is wrong here? This is not Alaska. This is the Alaska my dad, you know, brought me up in, and so. And then that, and that, the next case was the Sturgeon case, and I, I vote with John. I've, I've seen John Sturgeon up on the Nation River for years. We never talked to each other because we're all doing our own thing. Not many people. He'd run his hovercraft. I ran my jet boat, and it was in 2007. I was up there, and that was the year he got pulled over, and 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 John's really the one that that carried the heavy load on this one because nobody else. Would, I, I I shouldn't say that. I probably would have done the same thing. A lot of people would have looked at the legal cost and, and just said, you know, it's not worth it. I'm going to, I'm not going to go boating there anymore, but he's one of us. He's one of us that would say to hell with that. I, I'm not going to take it anymore. Like the guy in the movie says, and, and, you know, John, you know, I remember the park service employees telling John, his quote was, um, you can go ahead and do what you want to do. We've got a room full of attorneys. And, and he was on the sat phone with his um, attorney and he said, we're going to fight this. Go ahead and let him, he couldn't even drive his boat back to the landing. He had to call another boat to have it lifted into that boat to take it back. How ridiculous is that? And it just, that angered him enough where he says, I'm not going to let this go. And I have so much respect for John Sturgeon. And so we helped him raise $1.6 million and two unanimous Supreme Court decisions. So that kind of has, that gave us some momentum, even though the Park Service is trying to rewrite all the definitions in there and pretend it isn't so, but that was a big win. And so we, I was proud to be part of that. And that was probably the, 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 the big one in, in my, in my history is the Sturgeon decision.